that we've been able to grow you know what we've been about we've been able to showcase different things we've been able to highlight you know our culture a little bit more in Des Moines Straight ahead on our Hispanic Heritage Special, we're showcasing the delicious food, the beautiful community right here in our metro, and sharing a hopeful message to the next Latinx generation. Hello, I'm Erin Kiernan. Thanks for being with us. You know, all month long, we've been celebrating and telling stories of Hispanic culture here in our country. And in our state, the Hispanic population has grown over the last decade, now the second largest minority in our state, and it just continues to grow, and they make a big difference here in our community. Ceso Marentes is one of them. He's creating his own series of artwork. It's inspired by his roots and his life here in Iowa, and the hope is to inspire the next generation. Our own Cynthia Narano has the story. <laughs> To be an artist, you have to go all in. Getting dirty, it really, I don't know, it just, it sparks a lot of, uh, it sparks a lot of memories, you know, working when I was younger with my father and just coming home dirty. I remember he used to tell me, you know, Jose, if you, if you wanna, if you wanna look like you were working, get dirty. Ceso Marentes has been an artist for many years. To me, the finished piece is great, but it's the, it's the process for me that really gets gets my senses really heightened and get and gets my uh, motivation to see it finished. His artwork reflects his own life experiences and his proud Mexican-American background. It inspired him to start his Iowa series. It isn't like your traditional Iowa paintings like cornfields or any Iowa staples. It's a self-discovery identity uh, just a belonging. Instead, his series include paintings of Mexican artist Frida Kahlo to Mexican singer Vicente Fernandez to classic Contiflas. His most special project this year was the painting of a childhood TV icon in many Latino households. Chapulín Colorado, the red grasshopper. And Chapulín represents a lot of love and, and strength. His inspiration came from an East High School student discussion. They wanted to feel more like a community. Shortly after, a tragic drive-by shooting took place outside of East High School. My idea of what I originally wanted to bring to East High School shifted. And I was like, you know what? No, these kids need hope. They need a hero. They need something to look forward to. So after that, I was like, no, these kids need a hero now. They need something to look up to. They need, they need to feel that security. And so that's how he kind of came out to be. This project helped bring the students together. And so Chapulín was a way to bring that community and kind of cement it with that love. When I created that, I didn't know how I was going to tie it all together with, with as many students that were participating. And so some East High School students and staff picked up a paintbrush and the healing process began. You can only get that magic from Chapulín is that once they started writing their names in the back of it, I made sure that they put a wish, and so it was capsulated now. So now their wishes are the universes, and so the universe grants them those wishes, great. Sesso continues to inspire the community through his paintings. Everything that I'm doing is very important. I want the younger generation to see what they could be doing. And through his own life experiences. I want to break that, that kink in the chain, fix it, and I'm here at Mainframe, and I know other Latinos can be at Mainframe. And where I go next, I know they can go next. And you can find more of Seso's work and other local artists here at Mainframe Studios during First Fridays each month. For WHO 13 News, I'm Cynthia Naranjo. Great story, Cynthia. And you may notice something when you look at those paintings. The flag of Des Moines is in them. So the painting that Marentes is currently working on will go up for auction. It's happening at the Latino Gala. You can check it out on October 27th. It's happening at the Des Moines Heritage Center. Tickets are required for this. You can see the information on your screen here and you can get tickets at humanrights.iowa.gov slash OLA dash center. Back in 2020, during the pandemic, a local woman saw a need for a culturally specific food pantry. That's when her vision of knock and drop started. 
More than two years later, it is still growing. One of the reasons was the pandemic hit, right? And there was families that were being laid off and didn't know, you know, we have enough money for rent and bills, but we won't have enough money for food or vice versa. And so I started calling around and I figured that there were some barriers. So I'm the type of person, let's find a solution to those barriers. Mm -hmm. And I figured, you know what, we'll do a project because the pandemic isn't going to be here long. Well, here we are still <laughs> and we're still dealing with it. But uh, good things came out of it where we decided we were going to have a nonprofit called Knock and Drop Iowa. Why Knock and Drop? Because at that moment, everyone was scared of you know COVID. Right. And so we would go to families' homes and we would knock and we would drop the food. Well, now it's turned into a full-blown food pantry, but it's culturally specific for the Latino community where we buy food that we eat at home that we're used to. Because who doesn't like Mexican food? <laughs> Right? <laughs> exactly. Who doesn't like Puerto Rican food, Salvadorian food? Okay, so that's something that a lot of us would not think of, though. You know, we do so many stories, whether it's with the Food Bank of Iowa or DMARC, you know, all the partner pantries. And, you know, we don't think of the need for culturally specific foods. That's huge. Yes. And so we wanted to break that barrier because it's already hard for families to go and ask for something that they're in need of, mm -hmm. but especially when they don't have what they're used to. Um, I went to one of my volunteers because someone asked, well, why a Latino, you know, culturally specific food? And I went to one of my young volunteers and I said, Armando, I'm going to give you a box of food and a can of soup. And he looked at me and he's like, why? I said, that's the food you're going to eat today. He said, no, I eat tortillas, beans, right. huevos, chorizo, you know, and he just named off. And I said, see, this is why we need what we have now. Exactly. So um, it's actually grown tremendously since you started this back in 2020. So uh, what else? Are, we're seeing pictures here. Tell us oh, what yeah. else the organization does now. So we're, besides your regular food pantry, we're, we just maximize it. We want to make sure that... We already have that 501c3, so maximize it to however much we can put out there. Uh, recently, we just gave away 50 laptops. Uh, we're working on them. It's to scholarship recipients, first time um, children that are going to attend college, uh, first generation, college, university. And so we truly believe that if you go for an education, you can come back and enrich our community. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the stuff that we're working on. Then we're also, we also have given coats out. This is our third year working on winter coats. Covering Hearts is what the project is called. Mm -hmm. And this year we're working on giving away 500 coats. We're 100 coats away from 500. Wow. Yes. Polk County Early Childhood Development gave us that grant and it was just amazing because it's helped us a lot. Um, our other event that we've also worked on is Hot Meal Event. We try to provide a hot meal a month for families in need. Um, another one that we've also been working on is 500 whole chickens. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure for Thanksgiving kids are able to eat something that's, you know, not everyone knows how to cook a turkey. And if we give them a whole chicken, it's easier to cook. Sure. And kids can go back to school because most of us don't think that. But kids go back to school and hear everyone's stories. Oh, well, I did this. I did that for Thanksgiving. Families that are struggling don't have those stories. Mm -hmm. This way they can say, yep, you know, we had a great meal. Christmas as well, the knock and drop posada. That is something that we want to have a group of Christmas caroling. And then we have a room full of Christmas ornaments and um, Santa Claus and everything. Think about it. It's really expensive to take a picture with Santa Claus. Yes. And kids want to. They go and mm -hmm. they look, but it's too expensive, especially right now. So why not give them that so they can go back to school and say, yeah, I took a picture with Santa Claus. The little things count big for these big little Absolutely. hearts. Absolutely. They're huge. Mm -hmm. All right. We had um, a graphic up just a bit ago that had a list of those things. And then also this last one I want you to talk about and how people can get involved if they're watching this, the Adopt a Family Sponsorships. Yes. Yeah, so they can send an email out or they can go to our website and they can find my email, which is Suli at knockanddropiowa.org and they can say hey we're interested in adopting one of your families and we will find them a family they can tell us if they just want to adopt the children mm -hmm. and we don't look for expensive gifts sometimes a single toy or a drawing or something is very huge for a child that's you know in need yes so we just ask them what do you want to adopt the whole family just one child just the children alone and we will meet what your needs are because we understand some of us are all struggling yeah. 
Yeah. So that's how they can contact me and knock and adopt a family this Christmas. All right, this effort is so important. Here is that information again, the different ways that you can help this holiday season. They need sponsorships for the Thanksgiving meals, the hot meal event, and then adopt a family for Christmas. If you want more information, go to this website, knockanddropiowa.org. Well, some needs in the Latinx community you can't see or touch, but they're just as important. Straight ahead, the importance of talking to someone that speaks the same language and identifies with your culture. Somebody that immigrates to a new country uh, probably experiences a certain amount of trauma in doing so. 